welcome you both. Welcome back. Your Thank first you. time. Yes. What do you think of it? Oh. It's a little crazy oh, in here. Oh, this is your second time? But yeah, I came here a couple of years ago. So. Oh, out of yeah. punch. He hangs out here all the time. Out of yeah, punch, just now. <laughs> my goodness. Anyways, yeah. What do you cool. think? It's a little strange, isn't it? Having a yeah, club-like studio in a hotel decorated, room. Nice uh, decorated set. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Saw the film last night. You're both new to the franchise. Yes. Um, and But you're both also used to being on camera maybe bulking up, maybe mm -hmm. having to watch, sort of being able to just be the voice and not have to worry about your physique. Were you eating donuts on the side? Yeah, you should sit, uh, I mean, see uh, Kit's uh, flexing his uh, biceps. Uh, yeah. Were you flexing while you film. were doing the voice? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm that method. I, I actually <laughs> dressed up in the outfit <laughs> and bulked up for the role uh, for an animated movie. That's how seriously yeah. I take you this took stuff. took it really seriously. <laughs> You're gonna show us the way to Drago. And help Dragon Riders sneak into Drago's camp. Just kill me now. That could be arranged. Stormfire, drop it. Huh? Ah! All right, okay, I'll take you to Drago. Ah! Is it your first, both your first time voicing a character, is it not? Doing an animated? Feature, yes. Feature? Yes. Um, Sort of the first day, just sort of walking in and having that different energy that what you're used to, walking in and acting opposite an actor. It's actually, it's it's weird doing that for doing the, opening your mouth for the first time. You get the scripts and you talk about the role and then you, you get into the big sound booth and you've got a big um, glass wall that's silenced <laughs> off, full of producers. Yeah. And they're all looking you. at you. Do you feel like an animal in the zoo? Yeah, you know? and then you've got a, if you do a bit, that's a good analogy. And then you've got the director there and then, Suddenly, it's time to open your mouth and start giving the performance yeah. that you're meant to give. And 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 once you've opened those floodgates, you you go and you're off and you're fine. Yeah. But each time you do those sessions, that first moment of a is is very is is scary. And it's quite funny because after that first bit, they go, "That's great, thank you, thanks, <laughs> Kit." And then they shut off. <laughs> They go, thank you very much, thanks Kit, and then they shut off the wall and you can just see them all oh, discussing. Oh, is it like the, the partition, like in a, yeah. in a limousine where the, the glass it's goes almost, up and yeah, you're like, what are they there, saying yeah. about and me? And they, they get there going. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just going, what have I done wrong? Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit, it can be quite intimidating. I would think, yeah, it could be almost more difficult than working opposite an actor where you've got that person to feed off of and play off of. Yeah, although Dean, yeah. the director, is, is wonderful to play. He's wonderful, yeah. and, and uh, but I think there was an intimidation factor because you know you're used to be in front of the camera, on screen, doing, trying to keep this world somewhat organic and real, and in an environment that's not real, that's not safe. And here you are completely by yourself with a mic. You certainly are hard to get rid of. We must attack the Dragon Rider's nest at once. Now we have a fight. Both of your um, your characters in the film, I want to say one changes, one maybe attempts to change and don't know if they can. Do you think people can change in life? People can change, and but they have to want to change. No one can change you. You can't tell somebody else. No. Yeah. And, and you ladies tend to want to do that. Ooh, We love doing yes, that, right, don't we? Indeed. <laughs> change the man. Um, speaking of which, do you think men are still like Vikings? I like to think men are still like Vikings. You do? <laughs> yeah, I would go with that. Yeah, at times. Which part in particular? Ah. Besides the facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, no. You're gonna leave it at that? Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Viking yeah. behavior? Yeah. We'll leave that to your, your imagination. There's always a moral to every animated movie. If there was a moral to sort of your life story, what would it be? Keep focus. Where the mind creates a focus, where that's where reality exists, you know. And that basically means, uh, I mean, you go through struggles in in life, and uh, those struggles are basically uh, another way of uh, redirecting the course. And for you, mine's horribly English. <laughs> Go Mine's for it. like, be nice to everyone. <laughs> that sounds Canadian. I'm Canadian and that sounds very Canadian. Well, I think we we're apologize. More, we're, more similar. we're similar. We apologize no, for everything. But in all seriousness, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's this kind of terrible myth 
in the creative world that you have to be demanding and nasty to people to be a genius. Yeah. Are people and that, like that here? I've never heard of such only, a thing. Only the people who are never going to get to where they want to be are like yeah, that. Yeah, right. You but should I always be lovely and courteous to everyone you meet that's and right. treat people the way you want to be treated. Yes. And it's a cliche, but that's how I live my life. Yes. Thank yeah. you for coming in. Please. It's a pleasure. Congrats on the movie. Thanks for having Thanks. me. Welcome back. Welcome. Yes. You'll be on the pillow next week. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs>